I was originally going to make this into a simple Patreon video, just showing my daily life and whatnot, but I said nah and decided to make it into a sort of simple YouTube video. So recently, my community tab has flared up in debate regarding my next documentary, Operation Bagration, and whether it should be released in parts or as a whole. Be sure to vote on that once you watch this video. I've recently gifted a lot of attention to World War II, however I wanted to talk about something quirky and exciting that recently happened where I live. As you must have heard, I now live in Brno, which is the second largest city in the Czech Republic. Apart from the weather and wine, this city holds a special obsession with Napoleon Bonaparte. And why is that? Well, he won his greatest victory near here, the Battle of Austerlitz. I don't know about you, but I grew a pretty healthy obsession with him too, by naming my Minecraft character Austerlitzer. So if you ever see me in a Minecraft server, which is never, be sure to give a shout out. So in a nutshell, what was the Battle of Austerlitz? It was essentially the final battle of the War of the Third Coalition, which was set up to contain the growth of the First French Empire, headed by Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. Beforehand, Napoleon was trying to gather an army at Bologna in order to invade Great Britain, a conflict which had been festering for two years, but set his army east on August the 31st, 1805. An army of 72,000 Austrians under General Karl Mack crossed into the French ally of Bavaria. Russian troops also came through Bohemia hoping to join them. However, Napoleon's army quickly swept behind the Austrians, thus cutting them off and annihilating them. Over 30,000 Austrians were captured in the disastrous Battle of Ulm. Austrian forces also fared badly in northern Italy, with many retreating eastward. In the west, the Russians under General Mikhail Kutuzov were driven back, thus leaving the Austrian capital Vienna open to occupation on November the 12th, 1805. As the French continued to press northward toward Brno, Prince Peter Bagration was able to delay them just in time for the Austrians and Russians to coalesce in its outskirts. The decisive battle took place on December the 2nd, 1805, in the fields east of Brno, with the outline of the front being shown here. The sun will come out, I feel it. It will come. You know well the sun and me. The sun now? Disaster struck in the battle that would be coined the Battle of the Three Emperors, Austerlitz. I find this nickname strange, as the vast majority of coalition forces were actually Russians, since a large portion of the Austrian army was defeated back in Germany. The following victory for Napoleon was so decisive that Austria immediately dropped out of the war on December the 26th, with Russia following in 1807 due to further defeats and a war with the Ottomans. Now with the context out of the way, we can talk about the good stuff. Bruno's obsession with Napoleon usually manifests itself in two events. The Emperor's arrival in the city of Bruno on November the 24th, and the subsequent Battle of Austerlitz on December the 2nd. Commemorating the first event, a small procession is held every year in the city center, where a Napoleonic impersonator rides around waving at onlookers whilst they enjoy their bambaraki from the Christmas market. Nice. The second event, however, is the real deal. Just outside of Bruno, in the town of Zvarozhna, a beautiful reenactment of the battle is held just below the famous Santon Hill, where the French artillery was based. If you can put up with a random Czech guy blabbering for an hour straight whilst you try to immerse yourself in the grandeur of the battle, then by all means go. It was either that or the ridiculously over-the-top Austrian marching songs blaring from the speakers across the frozen landscape. Christ, this gives me PTSD of the battle and I wasn't even a reenactor. Just a guy pacing around looking for that juicy money shot. Oh yeah. But in the times of pure external silence, I marveled at the roar of the guns, whilst imagining the whistles of stray musket balls and cries of the soldiers charging to and fro. Here, take a gander.
To put it simply, the battlefield looks something like this, with the most important fighting taking place in the Pratsen Heights. Napoleon essentially wanted to lure coalition forces into abandoning the center in order to attack his exposed southern flank at Telnice and Sokolnice. As in the TV series War and Peace, Kutuzov did advise against diverting forces from the center. But Emperor Alexander said no, attack anyway. Long story short, the French break through the center given the weakness created by the redeployment, and the coalition begins to retreat. Russian cavalry covers the northern flank's retreat toward Austerlitz, but the south pretty much stands helpless to Napoleon's attacks from both the south and the center. Not good. Even so, that legends arose regarding the panic in which thousands of Russian soldiers drowned in the nearby ponds due to the French artillery fire cracking the ice. However, contemporary sources of the battle and current U.S. Army research shows this to be a complete exaggeration. Sorry, kings and generals, but you got it wrong. The battle that started in the cold, misty morning of December the 2nd was over by the early afternoon, with General Bernadotte's and Lana's hesitance to press for a final attack, something that would later annoy Bonaparte. But of course, this would be a minor setback as Napoleon himself surveyed the cold and calculating aftermath of the victory he had crafted, exactly like in War and Peace. Just as Alexander I had made his home in Austerlitz, Napoleon did the same following the epic victory, and thus proclaimed the battle, the Battle of Austerlitz. Become a Patreon of Blitz of the Rack today. Visit the link in the description and pin comments. As always, thank you to all my patrons. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm.